Leaves are getting brown and it is becoming colder. Autumn has arrived. Make sure to harvest your crops before winter comes. Hello again, I am Jim Rob and welcome back to Seasons in the Valley. And yes, it's the first day of autumn. So, let's grab our eggs before we do anything else. Now, we've already harvested most of our crops. And we'll see we've got... Uh, our wheat, our barley, and our canola harvested. We still have some soybean and some corn. Let's have a quick look at the map. There is our corn up there. And here's our soybean over here. Let's check the growth. And these are still in a growth stage, which is kind of what we expected. Uh, let's check in on our grass. And we do have some uh, that has been regrowing ever since we cut it. We look here, we can see that the track that we cut around the edge of the sheep paddock has grown back, which means that the rest of the grass that we've been working on should also have grown back. Obviously, this is the field that we planted, so this took longer to grow. So this is at stage two, I believe. You can see there, 67% in growth height. Nice big shadow. Look at the length of these shadows as the sun is starting to rise but there is another grass field which is just over there and this one should now be fully grown again which means we can get a second cut in it looks pretty good and there we go it is 100% ready so uh, we can do another cut of mowing however let's just check the schedule uh, I want to try and make sure that we get some stuff, other stuff done before we go straight back to mowing. So uh, today we are going to be replanting on our fields. So you can see here we've got this canola field, this barley field, and then our wheat field. They are all completely empty at the moment, kind of waiting to either be cultivated or re-sown with something. Uh, and we are going to re-sow them with a combination of different things. I'm going to try putting a little bit of a winter crop on this small field here so uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, a winter crop here that can be either wheat or barley or canola uh, those are the three grain crops that can grow over winter uh, and then the other two fields we're actually going to plant with oilseed radish to give us that extra stage of fertilization so uh, once again we're going to cut through the animal pen here hop the fence through the chickens and we're going to make our way into our T7 we've got more planting to do we're also a little bit low on fuel so we could probably do with a top up there there we go and then once we've got our uh, cover crop and our winter crops put in the ground then we will turn our attention to mowing again until we can get enough money to uh, well, yeah, until our other crops have finished growing just noticed I thought there was a new Holland sticker on the wall <laughs> it's, it's on the window that makes sense <laughs> um, there is one other thing we can do actually as well and we're going to do that before we do anything else we're going to finally sell some silage bales I keep meaning to do this, I keep forgetting about them. Uh, but we are now in a, in a position where we can actually sell some silage bales. So, we'll get that done first of all. See how much money we get from these. Remember these are 4,500 litre bales rather than 4,000 litre bales. So, they should have a higher price. But I'm also curious as to whether or not they are affected in any way by seasons. I don't think they will be. I'm expecting them to be, again, pretty much a fixed economy, but uh, I am curious as to how much we'll get for these slightly oversized bales. And we are going to get a little bit of variance in the price because not all of the bales are exactly the same weight, depending on how quickly we were able to bale them before the grass started rotting. So I'm not actually going to use the T7 for this. Park the T7 here for a second. I'm actually going to use our New Holland for this. 
Uh, New Holland, they're all New Holland's. I'm going to use our uh, telehandler, our LM here. And the reason I'm using this is a, uh, it's going to be a little bit easier just to control. The, uh, the trailer with the steering when it comes to reversing and also we're, we're going to need to a you know unload the bales that's easy enough but we're going to need to be able to then put those bales into the shredder and uh, and that's where the tally handler comes in Right, let's make sure I can get close enough. Alright, so let's uh, switch to loading position. Again, it's kind of trying to auto unload. Let's just pull up the help window on this. I want them to be in the transporting position. Thought we were missing a bale for a second then, but uh, you can see it's actually grabbed one from the bottom of that stack there. <laughs> so we've got one. It's kind of hovering in the air. That'll be fine until we actually nudge it. Then it'll fall to the ground, as will the other two. Um, but yeah, let's go and take these all the way over to the BGA. We'll put them through the bale shredder just there and see just how much money we can make from these. Oh, this could be a problem as well. We've got that weight attached at the back. I have to be really careful on this. It's going to make our uh, front lifting up an awful lot. It's going to really affect our steering. So, yeah, going to need to be very careful how I drive along here. I figured, seeing as we were coming out this way, we might as well have a quick stop and inspect of our uh, corn. You can see we're at 83% height, so they're in that final little spurt of growth needed now. Uh, one more sort of, uh, you know, little growth spurt is needed to get those to 100%. So hopefully, if not tomorrow, then I would imagine day three, we should be able to actually start harvesting that corn. Maybe day four, but I'd like to think we could get it in the first couple of days if we can. Although the weather's going to be bad day three, so uh, hopefully it'll be tomorrow. I don't know. It's it's a tough one. It's do I wait for tomorrow and uh, or hope for tomorrow and get the corn out of the way and the soybean out of the way while the weather's good, or do I do the grass mowing while the weather is good? It's that's a tough one. You know, I'll have to give that some serious consideration. Uh, anyway, the BGA should be coming up just a little bit further around the corner, I believe. Well, there is the BGA, actually. We're in the wrong place. Uh, I don't know if I've actually got the, the grunt to get this thing up the road. These bales do weigh quite a bit. Plus, we have that extra 2,500 kilo weight on the back of our uh, telehandler here. It has made getting up some of these hills very, very difficult indeed. Let's see if I can shortcut around the side of our wheat field here. Yes, here we go. So I can actually crawl my way <laughs> along this bit of ground here and then ease myself into the back of the BGA this way. There we go, we're in. 
Look at that, 39,807 is the weight. That's a lot of kilograms. Right, so let's uh, deposit our bales. Uh, let's move them this side to get them out of the way. And I think what I'll do is I'll leave the weight here as well so that we've got a little bit more control. So, I'm going to try and do these in stacks of six. This first one's going to be a little bit awkward because we accidentally nudged. Let me see if I can straighten those up. <laughs> not properly. I'm just pushing the, the whole lot, including the other side as well. That's not good. Um, right, okay. We just have to latch on as best we can. It's only really that bottom bale that's the major issue here. Alright, so there we go, we've got six bales. Let's drop these into the shredders. See just how much we're going to get for these. Nine hundred and twenty one. That's less than that's less than they are normally. You know, four thousand litre bales are normally sort of nine eighty on medium. That's terrible. Nine hundred and twenty one euros. Oh dear. So we had 50 of these, so 50 times 921 is going to get us about 46 grand. Uh, it's not bad, but it's nowhere near as much as I was hoping we are going to get. So we're going to have to do, I think, more silage baling. I just don't see any other way around it. You know, we've got a little bit of... Uh, ...of other bales in, sort of, uh, in place. Yeah, in terms of hay and some storage silage, but uh, I think we just, you know, may have to actually just sell a whole load more silage bales to to raise some of the funds that we need for expanding our farm. Obviously, we've got a crop income to still come as well in the future. Can't forget that, but yeah, it's still nowhere near as much as I was hoping it was going to be. Also, I've just dropped a bale there as well, which is not good. Luckily, I can just drive around the back because this gate has no collisions. So I can just drive straight through this. And this saves having to faff around with uh, weird angles and, and long extensions on the arm. But I can just drive in and scoop it up that way. But yeah, I'm, I'm really disappointed by that. 921 euros for 4,500 litre bales. That is pretty terrible, I have to say. Really bad price. It makes me wonder if maybe there is an economy for of the best time to sell bales, or silage bales. I don't think there is. If there, if you know any more about silage bales and, and variable pricing in seasons, please do let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, as far as I'm aware, they should still be a fixed price. It's just not a particularly good one, <laughs> unfortunately. And I don't know why. All right, now we're starting to miss with pretty much every bale. <laughs> This is getting a bit silly. I think we should start doing these in just stacks of three instead of uh, trying to do stacks of six. I 
Also, round bales would be much, much easier to load in at this point. I have to say though, I do quite like the fact that there are gaps in these concrete blocks. It means that if I have dropped bales like this, I can actually get the arm through. <laughs> of course it won't reach. <laughs> of course it won't reach. Ah, oh dear. Let's try from another angle. really want to drive over the ramp because there's a chance I might not be able to get back up again afterwards, but I might not have a choice in the matter. Yeah, see, there's 4495 in that bale there. I'm going to have to go around the back again. That's the only way I'm going to get to that bale, I think. I don't think the shredder actually gave me the full amount. I think what I just saw on the display there was actually less than the size of the bale. So I'm going to pay attention to that when this bale goes in. That's why I scanned it, just to double check. So I can't tip this in until I get back around so I can actually see the display as it goes in. That might explain why we're not getting as much money as I was expecting. I was expecting to clear over a grand for these bales. So, let's... Uh, Let's pay close attention to that digital readout and see what it says. Oh no, yeah, 4495 just changed really, really fast. Still only 921. Now oh, that is really disappointing then. I thought maybe we could, you know, I have identified a bug where these larger bales weren't getting the full attribution. But that does not appear to be the case. bales over. This this bale unloading session has not gone well <laughs> at all. Although, ironically, these might be the three that go in the absolute easiest. Yep, there we go. On one of them, drop look, 920. Ah, of course, we had different weighted bales, that's why. Um, so, there we go. We're up to 34,500. It's, it's not as much as I was hoping it was going to be, but, I mean, it's, it's something, I suppose. So, let's uh, head back pick up the second set of bales and then bring them up here to sell as well. Yeah, a word to the wise, if you are going to use a telehandler to <laughs> transport your bales like I'm doing, be prepared for a lot of this anytime you get to a big hill. <laughs> One mile an hour.
Well, there we go. That's the last of the bales, and we're now up to 58,500. So that's not too bad, but as I said, not as good as I was kind of hoping it was going to be. So it's just as well we can get a second cut because we are going to need to do another round of bales. Right. Next up is going to be to work these fields down here, get them planted. So a cover crop on on uh, field 52, a cover crop on field 92.63, and then we're going to do a winter crop on here as an experiment, see what kind of return we get the following year. So we'll replant barley on this, and we'll use that as a direct kind of comparison against what we got last time. That's kind of the plan going forward for the rest of the day. I'm going to hook this back up again. There we go. And make my way back to the farm. So I'm going to start with the winter crop first of all. Let's get our barley planted on this field. Of course, this is a direct drill seeder, so we don't need to cultivate the land first. It'll do it for us as we go. And we're also getting that first stage of fertilization into the ground already as well. So I'm really curious as to whether or not the fact that this is going to grow over winter as opposed to over summer is going to have you know, an impact on the actual yield that we'll get at the end of its growth cycle. It might do, it might not do. I honestly don't know. It's going to be kind of curious to see whether we get more or, or less the same on this field or if we do see a, a significant difference. There we go, there is our uh, crop done. So, uh, let's turn that off, let's fold it up. Let's switch over to oilseed radish, there we go. And now we'll replant our canola field. I also don't know how long it's gonna take for that to grow. I don't want it to take an absolute eternity. It may well be that if it grows quick, you know, quickly enough as an actual crop, rather than obviously just this one stage cover crop, you know, if a full crop can grow quickly enough, then it might be we could actually get two proper harvests per calendar year. But it's a risk, and I don't want to take that risk with our two biggest fields. Uh, because if the back, if the you know, if the gamble doesn't pay off, if it backfires, we're going to have an incredibly lean second year. So I would much rather do this experiment with just a small field, see how that gets on, and then use that as basically a template for the rest of the farm for future years. And with that money that we've got. Knowing that we have, you know, our logging income and our wood chip income still to come, plus obviously the price for, or you know, the income for our crops that we'll be selling through winter, and you know, we'll have our soybean and corn to sell next year as well. I'm thinking that we take that fifty-eight thousand. I think we've got around about maybe a hundred thousand left on our loan. And we see if we can buy field 51, which is next to you know, our current field of 52, so that we can then link those fields together into a big field before we replant. Plus there's a crop on it, so we'll then be able to sell that crop as well. 
add it to our existing kind of uh, yield. It means we're going to be pretty much on the verge of bankruptcy for a couple of months. But we can afford to do that, I think, if it is going to be so short term. And if worse comes to worse, we can always go and do a little bit of you know, emergency logging. And don't forget, there are other nuggets as well. I am seriously considering going on a nugget hunt over winter so that we can add an absolute ton of fields to our farm for next year and maybe add some additional equipment in as well. So uh, if you'd like me to do the nuggets over winter, then let me know in the comments. Obviously, we've got all of autumn to go yet, so there's no immediate decision required on that. But you know, if it's something you'd like us to do, then uh, please do let me know in the comment section, and uh, we'll kind of weigh that up uh, as to public opinion by the time we get to winter. And then if enough people want us to do that, then we will invest in a huge amount of extra land and equipment via a million euro nugget investment. So while our worker toils away on the field for us, See, he's just struggling up that little bit of hill there. Uh, we are going to go and pay a trip to field 51. Find out just how much that field costs. And then we're going to try and see if we can actually afford to buy it. And if we can, we'll jump on that and harvest that straight away. It's not fully fertilized, I don't think. So we won't get a full yield off it, but it's going to be better than nothing. And it is fully discounted, so that'll help. See if we get that juddering and jerk, jerkiness around here. Uh, it's not too bad this time. Again, you can see our worker just cresting that little hill there. And there is Bill 51. I think that's wheat on that field. Which will go very nicely with a crop of wheat that we've just got. Plus we can also get straw off that field as well. So let's pull in. Let's check the price of the field. And it is 157,618 euros. So we need 100,000 basically. Have we got 100,000? Let's see. Oh, we're twenty euro, uh, twenty thousand euros short. We're maxed. So let's sell a few logs to raise the additional funds that we need. See, we've got lots and lots of logs that we can work with here. Let's take a few off this stack here, I think. I have no idea how much a full load of logs like this is actually going to fetch us. Hopefully a decent amount. if 
maybe I should cut these in half as well. See if I make more money that way. I think it might be worth it. So, I'm going to try and uh, <laughs> be a little bit creative here. That one sold for 1600 Let's do it with a couple more, and we'll compare the prices of logs that we get for the full logs against the partial logs. That one only sold for a couple of hundred. Alright, let's just release the rest. So we're getting like 3,000 per tree log there by the look of it. Three to three and a half. Maybe even less than that. Hmm. And we're still just a little bit short. We need to sell just a few more logs. So, I mean, it might appear to be a bit of a reckless move to uh, completely max our loan out like this. But we have all of these logs here that uh, we can chip. Wood isn't going to make a huge amount of money just as wood. And there certainly isn't enough here to, uh, to pay off our debt. But as wood chips... At the height of winter, we have a real chance to make a big, big dent in it. Plus, we have our crops that will be coming in. We've got more grass that we can work with. So we can do another round of silage bales, bring in some more cash pretty quickly that way. It's, uh, it's actually looking like we can do reasonably well this way. We can certainly pay off the cost of that field very, very quickly. And don't forget, we already have th over 380,000 litres of wood chips in our silos just over there. So there's absolutely no reason why we can't you know, reclaim this uh, field investment very quickly. Hell, the wheat itself will pay out quite nicely. Not just the wheat, but also the straw that we'll get off that field will give us a nice little bit of income as well. So, it may, like I say, it may seem slightly reckless to be maxing our loan out just to buy that field. But the reality is, you know, it'll pay off pretty quickly. Let's just check the state of this field. See, it's only got one stage of fertilization, which is a bit of a shame. And it's too late to apply another stage. All that's left now is just a harvest job, but uh, we are going to buy this field. So there we go. We now have another brand new field, which means we have more work to do with our combine. Let's go back to the farm. Let's grab the combine, bring it around here and harvest that field because we've got nothing on here I'm going to cut across our own field here be a little bit quicker so yeah let's go grab the combine and let's attack this field and then we can link these two fields together and turn them into a, a, a very large single field ready for next year so obviously with the T7 occupied I've had to bring the uh, trailer up with the T6 There we go. We can actually trim away some of those logs as well. So we can extend the path of the field slightly. So I don't think we'll put a cover crop on this field. I don't think we'll have time. Depends how quickly I can kind of get through 
reworking this field, I suppose. But there are definitely going to be some trees that we can kind of cut down and then just move out of the way. We don't even have to deal with those trees straight away. As long as they're out of the way, we can plough an extension to the field when we link it in with field 52. And then eventually, when we have the money, we can buy field 50 in front of us and uh, combine them all into a single field. Obviously, the original plan was to uh, cut through logs all the way through that section so that the edge of 50 and 52 would join up and we could push this field all the way through into the forest. But once we took a look and saw just how the ground starts dipping and falling and how steep some of those climbs get inside there, uh, that plan kind of went out the window. But there's no reason why we can't do a partial push into the forest just to at least give us a little bit more of a, uh, a smooth transition between the fields. So we'll run along here. We'll do a headland at the other end again, because again, we're close to traffic and I don't want to be reversing onto a main road. And then once that's done, we can then just run up and down this field We'll uh, row up all this straw, we'll sell those bales, bring in some extra cash. We'll see the, uh, the wheat is going to go into our silo, sit alongside the amount that we already have. And as you can see, it's not going up tremendously fast because this only has one stage of fertilisation on it. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure if this field has been ploughed. I think it might have been. I think we ploughed this field. Let me hire a worker and check. No, we actually need to plough this field so we can get that done as we sort of cut back some of these trees here uh, and then link into field 52. So uh, I think what we'll end up doing is probably re-ploughing uh, re field 51 as well to keep them at the same state. I don't know, that's a bit extreme because if we're going to be buying 50 the year after, we're going to need to do exactly the same thing again. Um... That's a bit much. Maybe I'll just plough fill 51. I will run along here. Just to give us that little bit of extra turning room. And this is where the argument of uh, a leased combine versus an owned combine comes in. It all determines, you know, it's all determined by really how many fields you have to harvest, how big those fields are, and how big a combine we're talking. So, uh, to lease one of these combines would be initially quite cheap. Why get this guy up and running? There we go. So, let's have a look. You can see the TC590 here. Uh, initial loan costs would be 15,500. That's quite pricey, but when you compare it to something like its big, big brother, the uh, CR1090, that's 37, nearly 38,000 to get started. So that's n more than double the price to lease. Uh, and that's just the initial investment. But then comes the, the kicker. You have to look at how much work needs to be done. If you only have small fields and you only have a little bit, you only need to lease a small combine because it shouldn't take you too long in a small machine you know, to do small fields. If you have big fields and you want to lease, you probably do not want to lease a small combine because even though it's initially going to be cheaper, the per operating hour cost is what's going to get you. So you can see it's 7,040 euros per operating hour and it's a part it's a you know a, a part hour equals a full payment so that first bit from 0 to 0 0.9 hours that is going to be 
the full 1500 uh, the 15488 to to lease this uh, combine because you've got your base cost you've got your per day cost and then you put our operating cost that's your day one payment the minute you hit 1.0 hours that's a new operating hour so that's another 7000 now we've done our canola field we've done our wheat field and we've done our barley field and we have racked up 3.3 hours on our combine already so that is you know that 15,000 plus an additional three payments of 7,000 on top of that as well so it's not actually cost us you know 15,000 to lease it just to lease the combine itself and this is not including the header the header is going to have its own lease costs as well the combine itself has actually cost us you know, 36,000, maybe a little bit more than that, you know, a little bit in change. 30, 36 and a bit thousand to lease up to doing those three fields that we've done so far. That's how much it would cost us to lease. Now, if we were to look at a CR1090, obviously it's going to cost us 37,000 there. It's very, very expensive, but if we have a lot of stuff to do, this is where the balancing act comes in and it's kind of a sliding scale we still have soybean to do we still have corn to do and obviously we've now got this new wheat field here as well now a CR1090 could plow through those fields much much faster than our little CR590 but oh sorry our TC590 but having said that it's going to cost us an awful lot more now, if we had a lot more land that needed to be done, say we had another 10 fields that needed to be done over the long haul, the CR1090 is easily going to be the better option than the uh, TC590. But you flip that around, and we've only got you know the fields that we've got, it's probably going to work out about the same, or if not slightly cheaper, for the TC590 over the CR1090. Because of the sheer loan costs of something that big and as I say don't forget you also have the costs of the header thrown in there as well and if you've got multiple crops that means you need multiple headers you know, if you've got root crops or row crops then you need the equipment that's going to be able to harvest those as well and it all adds up it all stacks up so I think if you have a lot of fields even if they're small fields but you have a lot of them you're probably better off owning a combine because your costs are going to end up you know ticking over and ticking over and ticking over for us to harvest all of the fields that we currently have we're probably going to end up paying in terms of a loan cost you know of leasing one of these vehicles you know it would cost us let's see to do 24 25 26 2 and 6 on top of what we've done already plus this field here we're probably talking a total of about seven hours worth of combining so to lease for that let's see we're talking seven thousand as an average rough estimate 7,000 with times in that by six that's 42,000 and then we're adding in the 15,000 for the first hour plus that initial cost so now we're up to you know uh, 57,000 and that's assuming that we do all of that harvesting in a single day if you do it over multiple days you've then got your per day loan cost added in there as well it's not much it's only about a grand or so but it all adds up you go on to another in-game day you get another little payment that gets taken out then you throw in the cost of the header now we've got one of these and the loan cost of one of these oops is 1795 probably going to need that for an hour so that's effectively another 1800 quid then we've got this one which we've used for most of our harvesting that's an extra two and a half thousand plus an additional thousand or eleven hundred every single hour so 
our little least combine has ended up in one year in terms of just doing one round of harvesting is potentially going to wind up costing us if we were to lease everything somewhere in the region of uh, 65,000. That's quite expensive when you consider that you can buy one outright for three times that. You know, to, to do just one round of harvesting, you know, and you lease it and you end up paying that much money you're better off owning one, using it for a year, and then if you need to get rid of it, just sell it and get most of your money back. Leasing is, uh, is great in short term or with horrendously expensive equipment that is used sparingly, but on a long term, it's not really something that's particularly viable. You will end up just paying too much money. We are almost done with the harvest on this field and the equipment that we need is waiting off field as you can see there we have our tedder, not our tedder, sorry, our windrower and our baler. So we're going to get those uh, operational now that we have so little of this field left to do. Should be able to get the rest of that remaining crop into the grain tank. Don't have to worry about positioning this in the right spot so I'm just going to drop that there. Let's get into the T5. I'm going to work it to windrow the field for us. And then we'll be kind of chasing behind in the baler. Try and turn this over as quickly as possible. We do actually have a great demand at the moment for straw as well at, uh, at one of the sell points. However, It, uh, it doesn't give us an actual price in the <laughs> in the price menu, so uh, I don't know if we'll actually get more for the bales, but I'm going to try and sell them there. It's kind of come at just the right time, so this is why I want to get these uh, straw bales made as quickly as possible. So there we go. We'll run the chaser, and uh, we'll see just how... Uh, just how much we could potentially make off these straw bales. And there we go, we have baled the field. So let's turn off, let's eject that bale out. We're going to go grab the trailer and take these all the way over to AgroLife, which is where the great demand is. Hopefully we'll get a nice little bit of extra cash for these. Uh, actually, let's take the baler back while we're on the way. Get folded, raise the pickup, there we go. Uh, and then next time out, what we'll do is we will probably remove a couple of those trees along the edge there and uh, we'll rework the edge of field 51 and link it into field 52 and then we'll set a worker to plant a cover crop on there while we probably crack on with a bit of mowing so let's go get that bell trailer Okay, so we're arriving at AgroLife. That is not the way in. I suppose we better obey the rules of the road. Let's make our way around to the other entrance. Hopefully we won't catch the trailer on anything. There we go. Uh, so where is the cell point? It's just over here, if I remember rightly. Yes, here it is. So, let's see, do we get anything extra?
453 euros per bale. I think that's slightly higher. I think it was 448 last time. So uh, we've made an extra <laughs> an extra five euros per bale. Heady, heady times here. But uh, well, it all counts. It all adds up. So I'm going to carry on selling the rest of those bales and then turn in for the night. So we're kind of pushed for for time on the recording as well. So uh, I think we've had a pretty productive day again. And tomorrow we'll uh, get to attacking the reshaping of that field, you know, 51 that we've just purchased and get it linked into field 52. So thanks for watching. I'm Jim Bob and I'll be back with some more Seasons in the Valley very soon.